build, but it's not in this build, and it is. It makes the adjacency game much more interesting. Uh, that's a mystery feature that isn't quite in the game yet, but we're live. Hello, it's oh, the Starduck hi. stream. <laughs> I'm Adam. That's Paul. He's the lead designer on Galactic Civilization Three, which we're playing today. Uh, thanks for joining us. We had our week off, uh, which was nice for us. Uh, so that was good. I hope that uh, the 4th of July treated everybody well. Uh, it certainly treated us well. We, we celebrated the United States. It was wonderful. We had like the best weather you can ever have in Michigan for <laughs> that one day. There, was, I, there were a couple beautiful, beautiful I mean, there was days. a lot of nice days, but 4th of July, for some reason, was, at least in Howell, perfect. It was like, okay. <laughs> if the weather was like this all the time, I'd be a very happy camper. See, and coming from Minnesota, the weather is like, it's like living in, you know, some sort of weird tropical paradise all the time. So I'm uh, not the person to ask about that's that. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so we have, uh, we have played the, we have gotten the Alpha 3 patch 1 out the door, uh, which means that... Uh, since we kind of just shipped that, we that's what we're playing because we don't have an internal build that's uh, any terribly different. Um, obviously, Alpha well, 3... Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> I have an internal build that's quite a bit different. But... Well, I am not the lead designer on the project, yeah. so... I was actually going to think... I was suggesting maybe we use that, but it's pretty buggy right now. We just implemented a few kind of larger scale changes that are not ironed out yet. Mm. Um, hey, I have a question for people. It <clears throat> may not even know they could do this. So we have a mode here. See, the grid is off. The grid is on. The grid is off in space. <laughs> Has anybody noticed, used, or do they like this? This was a, a feature that uh, was a request of Brad. And I was, I don't like it. And now I kind of do like it. So I'm wondering if other people even know it's there and what they think. Yeah, so definitely definitely weigh in on that. Um, you should uh, drop it in the, in the chat here or on the forums um, at forums.galsev3.com. Um, I personally really like it. I think it adds a really neat effect and makes it a little bit more obvious where yeah. your territory is. Yeah. Um, Ooh, I forgot the iridium start with money. Give me that. Give me, give me, give me. <laughs> the iridium start with more money than anybody else? Or they well, just no, start no, well, they money. will eventually start, but they start with economic uh, improvements that are... Um, right now, as we speak, well, not as we speak, because I'm here, but um, before I came up here, I am in the middle of creating the custom tech trees for each race. So um, in the beta or in Alpha 4, whichever makes it out the door um <laughs> we will uh, be introducing that so that should be kind of cool i'm looking forward to seeing that what is it? what am i building i'm looking forward to seeing that too um and uh so those are yeah every race what what we will be doing is we're going to be killing off the starting text oh okay. so really the starting text will be what tree you start with and different trees will start you with different things so it won't probably won't be quite as straightforward as we have now, where it's like Dredgen get military. It'll be like Dredgen get something military, but but it's going to be more about the growth of the tree and not just here's some text. As it's kind of a throwback to Galsev too, um, to do it by just giving. But we just wanted something to differentiate the races quickly. Sure. And now we're we're doing the unique trees, um, and the first version will certainly not be final, but in the beta. The races should uh, play quite differently because of the trees. Now, I this is this feature is actually pretty much new to me. I just learned that we had decided on uh, on what form this was going to take because it's been in discussions internally for quite some time. <sighs> yeah, I gave up and decided. <laughs> that. I mean, honestly, the truth is, Brad convinced me. He essentially said it's not, and I know that people listening will probably disagree because I used to disagree, but um, it's not the fact that. A factory, I mean, we're going to tweak them all. Like a factory will be slightly different than a slave pit or whatever. But it's not that, I mean, I was like, well, if it does almost the same thing, why don't we just call it a factory? 
But the problem is that kind of kills the lore and the buildup of the whole story of the Drenjin. And, and when it's like, a, here's the Drenjin death beam special tech, and then the description is like, oh, factory created by Bob on Earth, you know. So we kind of needed to, to do that anyways. And we had a little jam session with the coders, figured out the best way to do it. I'm creating an editor that will be out to the modders uh, when the game is finally out and you guys will be able to make custom tech trees. You can actually take a regular tree and uh, and just add a few things to it or and it'll automatically generate it. It's, it'll be neat. I would actually like to ship with a, uh, there'll be the eight main race trees and then I'd like to ship with a few um, that are just flavor trees for people to create custom races with too. So that'll be exciting. And hopefully that'll be something that we can also share um, on Steam and so people can share their tech trees. And, oh yeah, yeah, with the Steam Workshop. Yeah, so rather than, the other way was a little more flexible um, from our point of view, but this is going to be much more powerful for modders. So in the long run, it'll work out. Because if you're not familiar with it, what we call the editor is basically this, this enormous spreadsheet. It's an Excel spreadsheet, yes. It's, <laughs> which it, sounds like really low tech. But, but it is actually quite awesome. It's super awesome. So it's basically, it lets you, as the designer or as a modder, go in and see all the data in a really in a way that makes sense to a human, right? So you can see the data. If anybody who stared it. as much XML as me knows <laughs> oh how valuable this is. Yes. So valuable. So, yeah. So... Anyway, so, so being able to see it in a spreadsheet that way is really, really helpful. And you can just go in and bah, 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 really quickly generate new technologies, new you know, data, and you know, change the damage on things, change how much things cost, uh, put in entirely new things. Yeah. With, Some of you which know, you can actually hot swap. Ooh, what the? <laughs> Some of it which you can actually hot swap and change live, depending on how drastic the changes you are do are. I didn't know that any of that was hot swappable. I thought that was all run data out. hot swaps pretty cleanly. Nice. Uh, the only time it doesn't is when you create a brand new value. Oh, okay. So, like if I create Drenjin, uh, as Alan would say, Blazers, <laughs> Blazers one, um, and there was no Lasers one, then I would have to restart. But if I want to change the val the de attack or the damage of Blazers after I've done that, I can do that live, and it's really great for me as somebody for who's sure. doing balancing. So. That's awesome. We had a question in the chat. Uh, Flymar wants to know about modable improvements. Uh, certainly the improvements. I mean, they oh, yeah. live in the They're editor, all just in like the editor. everything yep. else. But his question or her question, I don't know. Uh, Flymar's question is uh, how you would be able to drop in your own graphics. Like if you wanted to create a super mega factory, can you make yep. your own little ping and yep. put it in there? Yep. Um, whether we will end up with them just being pings like they are now is still kind of debatable, but the odds are they'll probably just be pings. And um, yeah, you literally in the editor point to a ping. You put nice. the ping in the right place, bam, you've got your factory. Um, so yeah, that's all doable. Um, we're trying to keep everything as moddable as possible. And I personally, because it's my primary tool, I try and keep as much in the editor as possible. And honestly, once the game is done, I'll probably make a pass on it and make it a little more user-friendly before sure. we release it. Sure. Yeah, and I mean, the big, big benefit about the editor is that the more stuff we can put in the editor, the more stuff you can do without having to touch the code, right? And not that we're necessarily going to expose a lot of our code uh, in, in the shipping game, but even for us, it, it has huge, huge benefits in terms of being able to in implement things quickly, uh, you know, get them in the game, get the, get the values tweaked, get the balance done. All that is so much easier with things living in... Uh, well, they ultimately, they, they live in XML files, but the editor generates the XML yeah. files. And you don't have to know that there's 100 XML files. Right. It just, literally, you just go bang, 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 hit this export button every time you make a change, and they're done. Right. Screens are not as easily moddable. You actually have to do a little XML editing for that. But By it screens, is, you mean? I mean? You want to redo the user interface, but you oh, totally sure. can. It just, it's not in an editor, so... Gotcha. Uh, we had a couple more questions from chat. Uh, Glenn Hot Dog wants to know how to send the launch direction of a planet, uh, which in Galsib 2, you oh, place L. Uh, that's something I've been wondering, too. I just assume that it's not done yet. But well, the, that is a funny question. Let us dock a planet, a dock a ship. See, now, what we, uh, we hadn't, we didn't really think. 
can I buy this? What's going on? Oh, I spent all my money. <laughs> um, here. Hacks. Okay, so I'm going to dock this here. Oops. And I'm going to screw up and have to wait. <laughs> okay. The Iridium ships are so slow. Really? Oh, I'm so spoiled by not playing the by, by playing. Oh, you've the been Altarians. playing Altarians. They're I love only the like one tick faster. Oh my god, but it makes such a difference when you're going from three to four. Oh, it's one tech away, dude. Just <sighs> research it. Or just don't yeah, try. but then I could research that with the Altarians. It'd be too fast. Oh, geez. I kind of like. playing No, Altarians. actually, it won't. Yeah, it's all, the only reason why they're faster is they start with. Um, I thought they had a racial. They might have a little racial. I think bonus. they have a racial. Yeah, but they actually start with. Um, oh, with interstellar or whatever. Interstellar travel, so they're getting hyperdrive plus. Anyway, so let's see. So I eject this ship, and I probably shouldn't have chose a colony ship for the sample. Okay, so <laughs> right now it just automatically puts it there. So what people want is like we had in Gauss of two a lunch. What I was hoping is you just and this better be working. I'm going to get very upset. Is I can select the ship and just go like this. And it sets its ah, destination. And there you go. I was hoping that would take the place of that. Um, maybe people didn't realize they could do that. So, I didn't realize uh, I could do that. <laughs> so uh, let us know if you still feel the need for the auto eject. Um, because especially for, I could see maybe for the um, the starport because it's making ships and you want them to auto eject to a logical spot. So yeah, we, we might have to add that. Um, but current, I actually kind of used like the Gauss of two way where it just stations when it comes out. But mm, um, but I a lot of people that. don't like that because then they don't know the ship is idle and blah, 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 blah. So, um, so that was why I didn't really think of that. But it, yeah, let us know if you if this doesn't scratch your itch and we will uh, add that to the list. It might actually already be on the list. I just can't remember right <laughs> now. Uh, I mean, we had a question come from Facebook uh, about how ship size will affect combat such as accu accuracy with weapons, will tiny and small ship sizes actually be useful during endgame, or will a large or very large hull sh uh, ships just go around one-shotting everything? Oh, God, no. Um, well, okay. Uh, I actually, somebody on Steam asked this same question, and I was I did a little, uh, like a, a two or three paragraph answer. And essentially, the truth is, it's a strategy choice. It's a strategic choice. Um, players who ramp up to large ships will often think, Oh, I don't, I don't need uh, small ships ever. A lot of that is because the AI is an idiot right now, so you <laughs> mow everybody over. But the truth is, no matter what your strategy is, you're gonna mow over the AI for the moment. Um, so you feel like it's too easy, but you have to remember a few things. Um, yes, in combat, tiny ships will be more maneuverable and faster, and they will then and they will be able to get in. And now that there's range, they'll be able to get in and attack sooner than the big ships. You'll have to add rage extension to the big ships if you want them to hit the small ships before they're hitting you. Things like that. So then the other, the big thing that everybody forgets is that if you have a fleet of five ships, they each have two weapons. Every round, they're doing 10 attacks. Your large ship has maybe five weapons on it. It's getting five shots out. Not only is it only getting five shots out, it has to pick one of those targets or, you know, it, maybe it'll pick a couple of them, but it's probably picking one of those targets. So I essentially might blow up one of those small ships. Those four are still doing four attacks every turn or eight attacks every turn. So in the long run, there are very valid strategies to do fleets of entirely of small ships. Hmm. So it's... Uh, it's it's kind of a this is one of our conundrums of, of Gal Civ is that we let people customize so much. Um, but yes, we there will be definitely uh, features uh, based on on speed and maneuverability. So small ships will definitely have more value, but you know, people who play through just ramp their way through in one or the other are gonna always feel like, Well, I, I don't even need those but I, I used to feel like that until somebody just crushed me with my large ships with a bunch of tiny ships. And the truth is that it really works out best to be a, a, a nice combination. You want a fleet that fleshes out, has some ships that'll fly in fast, a big mama that sits back and just pounds everybody. Nobody should be one-shotting anybody um, unless somebody has not been researching or something because no sure. one should have a weapon of that volume. <laughs> so 
So, yeah, I mean, one of the things that's that's always uh, interesting to me when you talk about, uh, you know, the amount of customization that's in a game like Galsev 3, you always worry that the players are going to come up with, you know, the one strategy to rule them all, right? Where it's, oh, well, I know that in the Age of War, if I make a medium hull that has this many lasers on it and whatever, that that's like the one ship that's unbeatable. That's just what everybody rushes to and it's what everybody does. Now, one of the good things about Galsiv is we were just talking about how everything lives in the editor. It's very easy for us to go in and change a balance. We're doing a lot of stuff uh, that we're not doing right now, but in the live game, uh, we're going to have all kinds of really cool data collection, not in a like snooping your privacy kind of a way, but in just seeing what players do and what AI does and what strategies are successful and what aren't. Like This is all this huge pile of data that we're collecting that we are then able to use for balancing purposes. And of course, we, you know, we talk to people as well and we play the game a lot ourselves as well. Yeah. So it's not just blind balancing off the data, but yeah. there's so much opportunity for us to, to really stay on top of that and make sure that there is a, a varied and interesting and not even so much as balancing the stats is balancing the tactics and essentially making it so that the ai knows hey he knows about that trick too and then if the trick gets so exploitable where it's the only valid way to win then we adjust it in in data we want there to be some things that feel overpowered but we want there to be a bunch of them and so there's like a, a good mantra. I forget who Derek says is like, it's, it's a, everything has to be equally broken, <laughs> right? You want, you want the players to figure something out and feel smart. And, right. and, and the funny thing is that we make, we, we don't do that on purpose. They just do it. And then you go, well, was that a fun thing from the fine or does it break the game? Right. And that's where we have to like step in is when it's like, you know, it's like halo with the, the pistol. It's like eventually oh, yeah. you're like <laughs> everybody just plays with a pistol, and right. you know. But it was awesome until you realized that everybody could headshot you all the time. Right. So we we have to watch that kind of balance, for sure. Uh, we are behind on questions, but that's okay. That means we have good questions. Um, do, do, do. Will the editor allow you to follow a specific tech line more easily? Uh, oh, I see. Just in terms of how the data is, Andros Halfork is asking how the data is kind of structured within the editor. Just so the, in terms of four modders to be able to follow a tech line and see where things it are. It should I mean, be. It should be. I mean, it's obviously not a graphical right. form, but and I do, when I do these, I do them by branch, branch, yep. branch, branch. And I've even messed around with the editor yeah, a bit, yeah. and it's not too bad. And yeah. you can always, um, I mean, and I, control F is always your friend. Yeah. The, the trick is essentially to open it up in the game, right. look at it, and then if, if all goes well, it already works most of the time. You'll literally be able to open the editor, open the game, change something, hit export, and the tree will just change. And then you can go, oh, okay, that's what, where that, you know, or that's something. That's awesome. So, yeah. That's so cool that it's hot loading. That's, that it makes, <laughs> has got to make everything so much easier. Well, hot loading is one of those, you know, I always make a joke. It's like the, the cake is a lie, is that the hot loading is a lie. But the truth is <laughs> the hot loading does work. And for the player, it will work in the middle of development it's one of the first things that gets broken so it's really kind of hard to uh mm. to maintain it so it's like somebody always has to watch it's like oh i did this one thing and now the hot lo loading's broken sure so you know i'm just jaded that way <laughs> okay uh jacob wants to know how much variation there will be in the star textures types and size and will that have any effect on the planets that get generated for those stars Yes, and uh, the star textures w are, are not done, but they're not too far off. What we're going to probably do is we actually have some procedural um, stuff we want to do. Uh, whether the procedural stuff looks better than just having a texture is another question. Um, in the long run, we will have better looking stars and more of them, but that's kind of a polished thing. Right now, we're more focused on planets and getting you know the overall map uh, in. Um, Yes, the stars, the, the way the system works in the editor, and so this you'll know, start to see how much in the editor there are literally a bunch of template systems that is what are used to generate planets. You can actually, to the extent of where I can just say, here's Earth, here's where every planet is in Earth, here's blah, 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 blah. Or I can say, here's a red star. It has the chance of having um, some asteroids and a dead planet, and every once in a while a really good planet. 
And then, you, and then I can essentially say, and red stars often have this type of planet trait on it. So it'll say, this is like an old dead world. And that world may have a big research bonus because it's like, so yes, it all contributes. A lot of that stuff is only half working right now. So you probably won't see that <laughs> working as designed probably till like beta two, but it's, it's mostly polished things. So you won't really notice even to the extent where the little planet features on the planet are determined by that. And the trade resources, which aren't even in the game yet are also determined by that. So um, there's a couple of, of really interesting things uh, derived from, from the star. Very cool. Uh, we have uh, another question from Trumpeter, uh, kind of along the lines of the setting a launch direction for your ships, but setting uh, where the starport shows up when you build it. You know, um, we we talked about that. Uh, I guess that would essentially probably have to just be a, a launch direction for the planet. Um, because it's movable, we didn't, we feel like, you know, it's not a big deal because <laughs> it adds like a bunch of UI to have that stupid launch thing. Sure. So um, like I said, as people, if the feedback is very much like, oh, I hate this, it ruins the game, then we'll definitely address it. Um, once we do put in a, a launch direction for starports, it might, we might as well just put it in for that too. But the only thing you can ever build on a planet is a starport. So it's literally adding UI for something that, that happens only, very rarely too. Only it, ever, and and it's you want to kind of avoid that whenever possible because uh, the more complicated the screen, the more spreadsheety the game, and the more spreadsheety right. the game, the more intimidating it is. So, for sure, we have plenty to intimidate people <laughs> now. Uh, so we had we had some really good questions on the forums about uh, how the Drengen starting with weapons introduces all these kind of balance issues with the start of the game or whatever. Yeah, which has already been addressed with the whole well, big change. Well, uh, the, the Drennan will still coming. start more militaristic. Um, the biggest reason why it's a, such a problem right now is because they, the starting locations are ending up smashed up against each other. Which is that, another question we had, actually. Yeah, and that's getting fixed. So, yeah, that should not happen. A range should allow you to get ships out before this. But, yes, we... We're probably going to have to take that out anyways, but I'll be able to give the Drengen other military advantages. Um, it was something I just wanted to play with in the alpha. And I honestly actually think it works other than the fact that all of a sudden uh, you're, you know, if they start right next to you, you're screwed. So, right. yeah. And, and also um, one of the things I am considering doing is giving the starport a little bit of default defense. We, what we like, and maybe star bases too, because I don't want people to get a lucky, although I might cut them, but like get a lucky ranger or something like that. And then right. just be able to mop the map. Right. Yeah. Cause that doesn't feel good when you're on the other side of it. Yeah. It yeah. really doesn't. Yeah. Um, let's see. We had some confusion over the resources and how they work in the game. Um, just in terms of that's finding resources, mining them, what they're used for, how they're used, how they're used up that kind of thing. Do you, do you want to just explain how the resource system works in Galactic Civilization 3? Well, I will explain how it's supposed to work. Right now, <laughs> um, right now, there's not a lot of things using the resources. In, in the beta, all of the resources should be in, and they should be much more clear. Like, right now, you can't even tell what to do, which is embarrassing. Like, you should, uh, you, you mouse over this, you should say, Durantium, uh, build a star base nearby to mine. You know, right. useful for building kinetic weapons and armor. Okay, so there you go. That's the explanation. So you'll get that. Um, I need to get my production. Oh, duh. <laughs> Let's get this going here. Um, yeah, it's much better. Three turns. So um, so what that does, what were we saying? Oh, yeah, okay. So the the uh, in the current game, it's they're, they're almost, they're not useless, but they're useless till like age of war. So we're, that's all going to change. But, um, especially uh, like our Illyrium is actually a little overpowered right now, which is the nebula one where you actually go out and you get an Illyrium resource. You can here. Now I am mining these two, uh, to Durantium deposits. 
and I have two Durantium nodes. Now, if I were to design a ship, I see, like I said, I have to research up to it, but I can cheat. Um, I could actually now build a ship that re has like certain armor that requires Durantium. Right. Uh, the, the biggest problem right now is that there's just no documentation. And also, everything's too high up the tree. So I need some low-tech things that will require uh, Durandium. That's on my list. Um, that will require all the resources. I forget, in in, uh, in the design anyway, is it all ship stuff that takes the resource, or are there improvements? Um, we have the capability of using improvements and even mods. Well, no, I, I we killed the module thing when we went back to constructors, but... Mm -hmm. um, Yes, you can build a require for improvements, and that's where I'm probably going to do is maybe make power plants require Illyrium Cause power or, or something like that where, where we can essentially start uh, introducing the, the player earlier to the resources. Right. right. Um, we don't want to make it so a factory requires it because that would, but well, hey, I got this one Illyrium resource. So I can make a really sweet I can factory. make a fusion power plant right. or something like that. Totally, totally. Uh, we had one last question. I want to. I, I, we keep going way over the amount of time that I've wanted to do streaming. So I'm gonna. I swear I'm gonna try to keep it down uh, to about a half an hour, which we're closing in on here. Uh, but we had uh, kind of one last question, which would be a good one to uh, kind of close with. Uh, John Janoller. John Janoller. I don't know. John uh, Dalar. <laughs> John Dar. I was just um, saying. Was... <laughs> anyway, uh, rally a horse in the in the chat. Uh, would like to know what the timeline is for going to beta. Uh, which is a whole question, and I think all we've said. I think we've officially we've said. said that right? it, I mean, it's going to be our goal this fall. is to have it in August. Um, whether it'll August, be the beginning sure. of August, the end of August, that is debatable. Um, it's yeah. I've seen I've seen the task list that is still outstanding to get this thing into beta, and it's. I realize we there are multiple people working on the game, but you know, from where I sit, it's, I it's actually a decent... it's it's not that bad. No, you don't think so. No, for the beta, the the code side of it, uh, I, however, will not be sleeping until <laughs> after August, and I will probably have gray hair and die. But other than that, the um, the code side is actually a lot of those tasks are already done. Terraforming oh, okay. is in, and um, I don't know. I think I've told people about this, but with the way terraforming works now, is you unlock terraforming little terraforming plant shows up here. And rather than you having to pick only certain tiles are terraformable, you can literally go, well, it is a little bit limited in that it has to be touching land. And depending on the tech of it, the, um, the amount of land gets less and less and less. And then there's one called biosphere where you can just plant it anywhere on the map. And so I can essentially say like right here, this would be a great place for a power plant. I can actually terraform this tile and then put a fusion power plant there. That and is super Now awesome, I've got yeah. what, like five bonuses when I used to get and and um, one of the things that I'm I is is in and will probably be in the beta is there is one when you get to Age of Ascension that lets you terraform pretty much was all of the regular terraforming plants are one per planet so you can take any planet up five classes by default if you research the whole tree but there's this one called ultra terraforming or nano terraforming or whatever that is not limited and you can kind of take it it's it's probably <laughs> overpowering you can essentially take earth up to like a 30. oh man so um but it is an age of ascension so maybe that's acceptable so i'm i'm uh <laughs> that will probably make it into the beta break the game completely and i'll yank it out but yeah, uh you gotta, i mean you gotta have something to end the game though too like well that's what i mean it's like but but the problem is what's what happens when every right. planet in the freaking well it would <laughs> i mean i got mars up to a 10 and mars starts as a four so it's not crazy overpowering you can't turn every tile on a map uh mm. to although a modder could very easily make it so you could do that <laughs> but um yeah, you can't, but it is really neat. We've also got a queue in the starports. Um, we've mm, got... That's uh, what I want. We've got uh, uh, improvement upgrading. We changed improvements to now you you do have to build like the basic factory to get to the quantum factory. But what you'll do is, because the problem is you get you have no population, you set a colony ship there. You're, you, it's going to take you uh, three months to build a, a quantum factory. You can literally just build the basic factory and... It'll just auto upgrade all the way up to, and in the meantime, 
it is contributing the whole time. So, so you did decide to go with that way. I know that was some debate last time uh, we streamed. Actually. I have decided it now. <laughs> I'm not promising I won't undecide it, but it is actually done, and I think it does feel better. That's um, awesome. I'm sure somebody will bitch. But really, honestly, the only way to really get an industrial sector or something like that late game is to buy it. Right. And that means, and if we are giving you enough money to buy multiple industrial sectors or something, you are, are money system is broken so i you know i we've got to balance all these things right. that sounds awesome that's a great way to end it actually there's more stuff through. too but i can't remember why <laughs> we did have one question that I, we didn't get to and i felt bad because it's somebody i haven't seen in the chat before and i want to welcome them to the stream uh wants to know can you blow up planets not in the base game. Not in the base but game. But I will promise you eventually you will be able to blow up planets. If only there was some sort of mobile star You will base. be able to kill planets. Well, you got to sure. remember, the Terra Star didn't blow up planets. It blew up solar systems. Wow. <laughs> so it blew up multiple planets. <laughs> so being able to kill a planet, though, um, is something that there is. And not only can you kill a planet, you can kill it in multiple ways. Um <laughs> But uh, that probably won't make it in until around the combat system. So that's sure. probably a beta or two away. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it it works. It's just that it really requires the AI to be smart. And I don't want to bring it in because yep. the player could just destroy everybody with it. And that's totally. no fun. Totally. Well, that's our stream for today, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope you had fun. We had fun. Uh, I have to let Paul go back and actually make the game. As he said, he doesn't actually get to really sleep between now and August-ish. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we need to, we need to keep him sane and Maggie's not in here. This is like the first stream we've done without Maggie in a while. Yeah. Unfortunately, well, she's in with hanging out with Chris or sitting outside the door wondering why Probably. she got locked out. <laughs> Probably. Well, anyway, that's it for this week. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back next week. Uh, maybe terraforming. I don't know. We'll see if, if, that if we can get, uh, we should be able to get an internal build for next week. You might That'd have to sweet. get it a little earlier, but yeah, we can show off some of the new stuff. Cool. All right. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.